years ago, but it's more relevant than ever as an Emmy-winning TV series, a powerful image of protest, and some say a cautionary tale of where this country could be headed. Now, Margaret Atwood has written a new sequel, The Testaments. Please welcome Margaret Atwood. Yeah. You are a legend in the literary world, of course, um, the author of the best-selling book, The Handmaid's Tale, and it tells of a near-future patriarchal society called Gilead, uh, in which the rights of women have been virtually erased. The handmaids are women forced to give birth to the babies of the ruling class, and you released it in 1985, and I read that the events in the book came from actual real-life events. Everything. Everything? Uh, everything. Well, I didn't want people saying, you're certainly a twisted, weird person. Yeah. Yeah. So instead I wanted to be able to say, I, I made nothing up. I just relocated it to Cambridge, Massachusetts, uh -huh. where they were not pleased at first. Well, but wh where were women being forced to have children? Which century would you like to... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which century would you like to visit? Which country would you like to visit? Huh. Which state in the United States would you now like to visit? Which was it in the United States? When was it in the United yeah. States? Well, 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 any any time before Roe versus Wade. Oh, I see. So, and and now since they're rolling back those rights and diminishing them so much, yeah. uh, you're approaching a, a state in which women are essentially being conscripted. Uh, or drafted the way you would be conscripted or drafted into the army. Uh, and my view on that is if you want to do this, if you want the state to claim ownership of women's bodies, you should pay. So if somebody is drafted into the army, they get their food, their lodging, their clothing, their medical, all of that covered. Uh -huh. So if you want to do that to women, you should pay for it. Huh. Don't you agree? Something's got to be done. Something, some remuneration if you're forced to give birth to some child that you don't... Well, I would say a lot of remuneration. Mm. Well, some people say they should pay women for just the housework that we all do. With raising children, cleaning the house, everything else we do, we don't get paid a dime for that. Mm. Well, I think it's a little bit different when it's your entire body that's being taken over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, recently in this country and in uh, other places around the world, we've seen attempts to severely limit people's rights, as you've just mentioned. In your view, uh, do you think we're moving towards Gilead? Some places are, and some places are moving in the other direction. For instance, Ireland just took a step away from it. So you have countries where women have never had those rights. You have other countries where they've had them and they're being taken away. And what you can say about every totalitarian government, whatever their reason of being they say they have, uh, whatever their ideology, one thing they always do is roll back women's rights, right. every single one of them. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is a symptom and also a result of going further towards an autocratic, authoritarian, totalitarian government. Mm -hmm. So I... I've watched every episode of Handmaid's Tale, and, and of course you wrote the book that then created, the, it's on Hulu. Um, it is a very, very dark show, uh, much of it is. I watched it actually, I binge watched it when I was pregnant, which is probably not the time to do that. Um, but I did, and I, I have to say, as, as hard as it is to watch in some of these scenes, I felt very uh, empowered. I felt even more motivated as a woman to want to fight for our rights as women um, and to be treated equally and all of those things. And it's funny because when you watch it, that's not what I thought I would take away from it, but it had sort of the reverse effect on me. Is that, are you surprised by that? Because it's now being used uh, in, in, in a lot of ways, as you talked about, Sunny, um, for people to, to speak out more. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's become a very useful visual <clears throat> symbol. That started in Texas. So it was Texas women who wanted to go into the Texas legislature where you saw a line of men in dark suits uh, making laws about women's bodies. So they dressed up and they just sat modestly so they couldn't be thrown out for creating a disturbance and they couldn't be thrown out for dressing immodestly because they were completely right. covered up. Um, but, but everyone looking at them knew what they meant. Mm -hmm, yeah. And that has gone around the world as a symbol uh, of protest against 
women's bodies being controlled by people who aren't them.